Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. If you want to know what I discuss, just look at the description below. And if you're new to the channel and you like what I talk about, you can subscribe, you can like, or you can share, or you can do all three. And for my existing subscribers, as always, thank you for your support. Um, today is a tricky subject. I've called it the the age of the new normal or what is new normal and I'm going to show you a video which is the, the inspiration behind this and then I'm going to try and talk about it a little bit and I'm also going to try and support it with different videos but as you can appreciate trying to navigate that might be a little bit difficult but I'm going to try and make it as fluid as possible Okay, so I'm going to start off with the first video, which is quite controversial. In fact, I think it might be very controversial to some. And then I'm going to go into the rest of the video. So, all is, let me just make sure the volume is turned up, and it is. I am sick of the trans community. The trans community are asking us to suspend our logical, rational, critical and analytical capabilities and replace them with sympathy for people who are clearly going through something mentally or neurologically. First it was transgender, a bunch of grown men asking us to call them women because they felt that way. Society played ball, they gave them operations, they made them become more feminine, they chopped off their testicles, they chopped off their penises, they gave them breast augmentations and hormone therapy, and hey presto, I'm a woman. The fact that their chromosomes clearly indicate that they are men means absolutely nothing. What matters is the way they feel. Rachel Dozel a white lady in America attempted to convince the world that she is transracial. She identifies as a black woman. She even had a position in the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. A white woman convinced herself and the rest of the world that she's black. And she went to work in a black organization. The fact that her genetics indicate that she's European means absolutely nothing. What matters is the way she feels. Now here comes trans age. Emil Rattleband, a 70 year old man who is now asking the court to change the date on his birth certificate because he feels more in his 40s. The amount of times that the earth has orbited the sun while he's been alive means absolutely nothing. What matters is how he feels. Now here comes trans able. People who feel like they should have been disabled. Some of them even tried to cut off their limbs and cause themselves harm just to feel disabled. The fact that they are perfectly healthy means absolutely nothing. What matters is the way they feel. Trans racial. Trans age and transgender. What's next? Now, before I get called all kinds of phobics, I will say this. Every human on this planet deserves their human rights. I do not wish to kill, harm, enslave, or maim the trans community. But what I am asking is for the trans community to stop the bullshit. Because if you feel this way, that doesn't mean that we should also see you this way. I see myself as handsome. However, if I went to court to force through a motion that all that look at me should call me handsome, well, that's just plain arrogant and egotistical. I'm entitled to my feelings, as are you. But your feelings are about yourself. They should not be my concern. They are your concern. What trans people are asking us to do is to see them the way they see themselves. It's perception. And perceptions are subjective and not objective. Your perception is not our perception. And we are not obligated to call you the thing that you wish to be called. Now, what does the future look like? 
In my opinion, if we continue along these lines, there will be such blurred lines that we will reach the point of no return. I want us to be very careful because we are raising a generation of very smart young people. And if an adult can identify as a younger person, then the time will come when that younger person now wants to identify as an adult. And hey presto, we will have parents that are now older, or sorry, younger than their actual children. The actress Charlie Theron is raising her adopted boy as a girl. She stated that at three years old, he said to her, I'm not a boy. And bingo, she decided to raise him as a girl. Now, I would love for that child, okay, to say to his mother, at seven years old, I'm not seven, mummy, I'm 54. And see if she now wants to raise him as a 54-year-old man or woman. The lines of facts are about to become very blurred. And apparently, we, the rational thinking public, will be wrong for speaking about the descending madness. There will come a time where a grown man that identifies as a child and a child that identifies as an adult will engage in a relationship. And the words child molester and paedophilia will not be enough because they will be drowned out by I identify as, and could you use the proper pronoun? This is our future. But what do I know? I'm just some black guy on the internet. I am sick of the trans community. So, that was the inspiration for this video, which is a very touchy subject. But I needed to talk about it because, number one, um, when he was talking about the... First, I just wanted to comment on that because when he was talking about the chromosomes either identify as one or the other in intersex um, people, people, they don't. They, that's a kind of a, um abnormality, so to speak. And so they do have mixed chromosomes. So that is a bit different. Um, yeah, and yeah, that's what I wanted to say about that. Now, let's get on to people like, I don't know how many of you are motivational or listen to inspirational speakers, but have you heard of the saying, whatever your mind can conceive and achieve, it will believe. Now, I'm not quite sure if it was Dale Carnegie. I'm not quite sure if it was Earl Nightingale or um, who's the other one? Um, Dale Carnegie. Oh, I can't remember the third one. Napoleon Hill. All three of them said it, but I'm not quite sure who the author is. I think it's Napoleon Hill, but I don't want to categorically say. So, if whatever the mind can conceive, it can achieve, and this is what is being drummed into people, what is to say that these people, as he says, I mean, he, he was talking about feelings. I don't believe it's what they feel. I believe it's what they believe about themselves. Feelings are a bit, you know, topsy-turvy. They facilitate, you know, they change. But when you believe something, you categorically believe that to be true. And these people are actually, they've actually convinced themselves that this is who they are. Whether it's transgender, whether it's transracial, whether it's trans age. Now, um, I'm going to show you, okay, I'm going to show you the first one, which is trans race. Um, Trans race, that was Rachel Dorizel, and she she was a white woman of European heritage, and she went through the system as a black woman, just say by saying she was black. I mean, you can have fair black people, and they do say you have the one drop rule, which means anybody who has one drop of black blood in them are black. So if you're sort of white woman, of a woman of olive skin, you know, 
assigning herself to be black? Why would you doubt her? But she joined the NA NAACP, which is for Caribbean people, a Caribbean organization. She, rec she was recognized as a black woman throughout the system until I don't know how she got toppled. And then we have Martina Big, who took injections to become black, melanin injections, and she's turned so black. And now she's of the opinion that even though she has a white husband, because she has, because she's black now, she can have a black child. Anyway, let me show you Martina quickly. I'm not going to keep it on for very long. Um, no, I'm not going to show you Martina. I'm going to show you, because I don't think I kept that one up. Oh, hold on, let me just see quickly. I don't want to waste too much time. Okay, let's go to Caitlyn Jenner first. Um, that was Bruce Jenner, who was an athlete, 6.2, and he, well, he associated himself with a woman, and he'd always believed, and he was in this kind of conflict. I would say that might be gender dysmorphia, because he seems to be quite emotional and upset and stressed about it. So they have gender misforcia, dysmorphia, which is supposed to be when you, uh, which is, I shouldn't say supposed to be, when you have stress about your gender and you have conflict. Okay, so this is a little bit, I'm only going to show you a little bit, but just to support what that gentleman was saying. And the thing is, um, that was sent to me by WhatsApp. There's no name. It's not done by YouTube, so I couldn't even put in the link, so I don't know who that man is. Is through tears telling about the secrecy and confusion that had locked him into a kind of fortress his whole life. At a symbolic yeah, moment, we're talking about all this stuff. The ponytail yeah, came free. Okay. Are you a woman? Um Yes, for all intents and purposes, I am a woman. And that's very hard for Bruce Jenner to say. Because why? I don't want to disappoint people. Bruce lives a lie. She is not a lie. I can't do it anymore. In that moment, the anguished, uncertain man we knew as Bruce said farewell. And two years later, as we pull up to a door at a house in Malibu, someone very different comes out to say hello. Welcome. Remember me? I do. <laughs> two years. Casual, still welcoming, and this time, excited. We have so much to talk about. So that's a man identifying as a woman. Um... I want to just quickly, if it can, if I can find it quickly, um, find the other one. Um, let me just see. Should be here. Um, let me just go to history. And I'm has sure you've probably all seen this. In order to become a black woman. And this morning has followed every step of her controversial story. When I was younger, I admired the curves of Helen Anderson. My next step is going to pump up my lips also. My eye color has changed. My eyebrow color has changed. And I can feel in myself that I'm changing to a black woman. Um, I like the curves of black women. And I want to um, get them. Step by step. Well, Martina is here now alongside her new husband, Michael. And good morning to both of you. Thank you for joining us here today. So, I mean, you look at the, the difference there. I mean, we have been following your story. And you were you were never comfortable with your natural appearance. Oh, the one you were I, I was. Um, I like my natural blonde beauty. But also, it's like tuning. Um, the, um, if boys get a new car, they start tuning. And then they say, oh, it's a nicer result. Let's find a matching piece. And then it's going to be more and more. And so that's Martina Big, who wants to be black. Or actually feels or believes that she is black, even though she was born white. 
and she's actually turned black. She's had melanin injections, hormone injections, breast augmentation. I mean, she seems to think that all black people have big boobs and are curvy. You, not all black people are like that. You have white people and black people with big boobs or, you know, big butt or whatever. So that is trans race. I've done the transgender. So now let's look at the trans age that he was talking about. Um, let me just make it larger. I give a seminar from the morning, 10 o'clock, till the morning, 4 o'clock, 18 hours in a row. Emil, you know, Emil there's, yes. there's one slight problem with all this. There's one slight problem. Which is that you, no were, problem. you were born on the 11th of March, 1949. That's a beautiful date. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. That, that's when you were born. Yes. That's how old you are. Yes. You, you, you're not actually 42, you're 69. No, but the times has changed. No, they no. haven't changed. No, they have no changed. Time has changed. No time has changed. And that no birthday has changed. It has all to do with beliefs. It has all to do with beliefs. So in the past, you know, the church, the state, and the parents were controlling you. Nowadays, we are free human beings. So we can do whatever we like. We can choose our clothes. We can choose the You can't the change the fact of the date you were born. But if you want to make the decision, you are born like a beautiful, small girl. And now you're as beautiful as you are now. And now you say, I feel like a man. I want to have a dick. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, here. I'm from the continent. I'm from the continent. No, 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 you yeah. can't bring Holland over here. <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, but, more liberal on that. We'd like to yeah. apologize. Okay, sorry, I apologize. Anybody who was offended okay. by it. Okay, so you want there. to have something different than a woman has got somewhere on a certain place, and so they rebuild you, and that's possible. And so, so you have been born by your parents, you brought them to, to the townhouse as a girl, and now you're a woman and you want to change in a man. You can't change your age. You just can't change your age. No, but that's your belief. Why I, don't you just celebrate the fact that you are 69 I and everybody did. thinks you're younger? I always did, but I look at People the future. People can be pleasantly surprised. Look at the future, look at the future. So we have a huge problem, exactly the government says us. So 12% of the people in Holland, in Europe, are more than 60 years old. And in today, in 20 years, more than 35% of the people will be more older than 60 years. So if everybody can choose his own age, he has the decision to work as long as he likes. He can do whatever he likes. And you think it's going to help you with women, this, right? No, no, well, I'm, I'm not that good looking. But, you know, the woman never asked my, my age, but so when I'm on Tinder... Why would you want to change it then? No, I, want to change, I don't want to lie. No I'm woman's going to believe you're 42, Emil, are they? Why not? Are you eh? jealous? What's your age? What's your age? Eh? What's your age? I'm 50. The thing is, he has a point. He has a point. I don't see how they can say it's okay for you to change your gender. It's okay for you to change your sex. It's okay for you to be um, transracial. And now he's putting forward an argument. These other people are saying, I believe that I am a woman, even though I'm a man. Another man. Another person believes they are black or they are white, even though they are black. So why can't he believe he is 42, even though he is 69? It's like, you know, he's saying that people who are 69 no longer, no longer um, look or feel as though they're 69. They actually look and feel as though they're 42. And I can testify to that because as an older woman, I don't feel or look my age. So wouldn't it be great if I could tell the world, look, I'm 47 or I'm 50. You know what I mean? So I don't see why they're knocking him down like that. And apparently the court didn't knock him out you know, they're, they're saying that can't happen because already they are making gender and non, uh, gender. Um, they're taking out the gender out of passports. And you can put male, female or other and you identify what the other is. So sooner or later, they'll be saying, you know, you don't have an age. And they won't be able to identify you with your age and probably they won't even need it if they're using biometrics and it goes on your looks and your fingerprints so i just wanted to run that by you um what else did i have here it's about their internal reality who they believe they are unless like i said they have gender dysmorphia 
um, is how they're programmed. Oh, but you know what I don't agree with? Um, apparently, the House of Commons are talking about lowering the age below 18. So, you know, you have young people. I think there's a girl of eight. I didn't um, have that video because otherwise I'd be going through my phone all the time, um, who identifies as either male or female. I can't remember the gender. But what the House of Commons are saying is that they want to give children puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones that's going to delay their puberty until they decide who they, which gender they want to identify with. And they're talking about the amount of um, side effects from that. Can you imagine? Oh, you know, number one, it would delay menstruation. I don't know what it would do for the boys. But what they're saying is that they're going to give children who have that kind of dilemma puberty blockers. I mean, they're just talk. They're just interfering with nature. Um, what did I have here? I have something here. Um, let me think. Change should occur within their natural and spiritual laws, but they are being mad. That but changes are being made through man-made laws. That is not. Um, what can I say? I'll just leave it there for now. Um, the House of Commons has approved gender re-identifications with certain criteria. Let me just go to what I typed up, actually. Um, I think I've covered most of that. So we have redefining the normal, what is normal in 2019. We have gender fluidity, which is Caitlyn Jenner, who used to be Bruce Jenner, and Eddie Redmayne. We have queer theory, destroying the theory that male and female were two distinct types. A bit, it's a bit like binary theory, I think. Um, feminism is just thrown that totally out of the window. Uh, because all they were asking were, were equal rights. And even Jermaine Greer has issues with trans, the trans community. It means about redefining language and terms. And, you know, you have to rewrite books because certain people don't want to be identified with this. You know, you have different pronouns and goodness knows what else. I mean, it just it just plays havoc on everything that we've ever believed in. It's just throwing whatever we've believed in out of the window and creating a new reality. That is what they're doing. They're redefining normal and creating a new reality for everyone. So I don't see why that guy can't say he's 42. He might as well. He might even say he's a cat or a dog. Now, suppose when people start saying, look, I identify with a cat as a cat. What are they going to do about that? And they start behaving like a cat and wearing cat's uniform and stuff. Are they going to then say, oh, yeah, because you believe you're a cat, you are a cat. Because that can happen. I mean, they're taking things out and they're just leaving it open. And like that gentleman said on the video, children are not stupid. They're very intelligent and they can exploit legislation because they are super intelligent. So these pick the older generation, they're just, this is just new to them. So they're thinking, oh yeah, well, we've got this transgender, so we need to identify it. They brought it into law, so it's legal. And they don't realize they're opening up a can of worms. Um, what else do we have? Um, transgender, trans age, assignment at birth is different from how individuals want to be recognized. Trans agenda. The trans agenda wants more than tolerance and inclusivity. They also want us to redefine what queer really is, i.e. the age of the new normal. Um, gender dysphoria, like I said, is a medical condition. Gender Recognition Act came out in 2004, allowed transgender persons to be recognised in their newly formed agenda, provided they've lived in their chosen gender for two years, they have to be 18 or over, but they want to reduce that age. Plus, they've received the endorsement of two doctors and they've had them certify it. 
gender reassignment, changing from one gender to another. And people have died through the operation, you know. Um, 2005 Equality Act made it illegal to discriminate against transgender. Um, and like I said, they want to give children puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones to stop the onset of puberty until they decide what gender they want to be. Um, I don't know if how many of you know this, but you know they were teaching LGBT in schools now. That has been stopped, but um, it will not. Be, children won't be forced to attend those classes anymore, especially if it goes against their faith or anything like that. Um, but it's not until 2020. I don't understand why that's not for immediate effect, because by 2020, um, children will have already formed an opinion. Um, I think something like that. Why wait a whole year before you put it into force? I don't understand that. I mean, when they're making legislation about immigration and whatever else, they do it within minutes. So I don't understand why something like that has to wait a whole year before it goes into force. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, people should have a choice. Um, from September 2020, the uh, relationships of sex education in schools England uh, will have the following changes. All primary schools in England teaching relationship education. All secondary schools teaching relationship and sex education. Reform statutory guidance following consultation. Retaining the parental right of withdrawal from sex education with new rights for children to opt in as they approach the age of 16. Flexibility for schools in their approach, including for faith schools to teach within the tenet of their faith. Um, and also it was published by the Department of Education in June 2019. Um, reforms for schools to actively promote British values prompted fresh concerns from religious organisations that teachers could be required to promote same-sex marriage to which they were opposed. The government stated that schools should encourage pupils to respect other people even if they do not agree with them. And then the Equalities Minister stated that teachers would be able to describe their belief that marriage is between a man and a woman while acknowledging that same-sex marriage will be available within the law. So what can I say about that? All I can say is that it does seem that um, whatever Napoleon Hill said, whatever you conceive and believe, you can achieve. And I think this is evidence of that. Your comments would be appreciated. Bye-bye.